Good morning. You're probably all wondering how I came to be preaching in front of you today. I sure am. How it actually all came about is I emailed Pastor Andrew on Thursday asking him if I could speak about a class project during today's service. He did one better and asked me to do the whole sermon. I'm thinking the Texas heat probably got to him. I'll tell you more about why I wanted to speak to you in a few minutes, but let's get into the sermon series. As we continue our journey toward Easter, our series, Gathered Up in Jesus, invites us to self-examination. We might look around the world, know that something needs to change, and then realize that that change starts with us. Change toward lives in God's kingdom starts with connections and not with condemnation. Two weeks ago, we talked about what it means to produce fruit in our lives and add value to the community and God's kingdom. Jesus gives our lives purpose and direction. We can both understand and experience fruitfulness as part of God's kingdom. Last week, we took a closer, note, took closer look at the story of a man who had two sons and remembered that we can find ourselves chasing after things in our lives that don't have lasting significance. God's grace leads to genuine repentance and transformation. Today, we will focus on the story of Mary washing Jesus' feet with perfume, which brings different reactions from the others in the story. Like Mary, we have the opportunity to bring love to the table without always worrying about the cost. Jesus calls us to serve with kindness. So over spring break, I had the opportunity to travel uh, to France with a Women in World War II class that I'm taking at Washburn University. While our days were filled with museums and sightseeing, we also had a lot of time for shopping. I wanted to bring a gift back for those close to me in my life to share a piece of the trip with them. I brought my mom back some chocolates. I brought my brother Eli a beret, which he would not wear today. I think he should have. <laughs> and I brought lots of books back from historic bookshops in the country to share with other people I love. Some people may look at how much I spent or brought back and think that I wasted my money or that I was buying gifts to brag about my trip. Those were far from what I was trying to do though. I simply love to give gifts. It is so easy to judge others solely by what they have or what they spend. As Americans, it's hard to go through a day without thinking about money or what something is worth. We do it when we budget for a grocery store trip or when we decide not to buy a new laptop and just use the one that has a cracked screen and we look at the worth of what others have, their family vacations, the clothes that they buy, the, the cars that they drive, we find ourselves comparing our lives to what those around us have or don't have. Our world has become so focused on material things and less about what is meant behind the gifts given, the importance of the things we buy ourselves and the joy we get from giving to those who live without basic needs. I think that Mary was judged similarly in the scripture from John that we read today when she had intentions that were solely cemented in love. Let's look at the scripture reading from John again. Verses four through seven say, Judas, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, complained, this perfume was worth a year's wages. Why wasn't it sold and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and would take what was in it. Then Jesus said, leave her alone. The perfume was to be used in preparation for my burial, and this is how she has used it. We see anger from Judas as he views Mary's actions as wasteful. Judas was a man who knew the cost of everything but the value of nothing. Jesus didn't think about the cost, only about the love behind the giving. John saw this act as a prelude to Jesus' acts of service and giving the, at the Last Supper, which was only a few days away. We know that Jesus recognizes the washing as Mary's love for him and as an example of the way that he wants us to continue treating others after he is gone. So what can we leave at the table as we come uh, forward for the sacrament. 
What act of service could we perform as we move into the days ahead? As I said in the beginning, I originally reached out to Pastor Andrew to speak about a project I am doing. I am minoring in leadership studies at Washburn University, part of which involves taking four core leadership classes. As a junior, I'm in the 300 level class, which uses the entire semester as a community change project. My class is small, only eight people, but we're mighty. For this project, we have partnered with United Way of Greater Topeka, more specifically, Women United. Using Women United's guidelines, we are focusing on giving to women and children in crisis situations in the Topeka community. Half of our class is working on choosing organizations that could receive funding to further their work in the area of women and children. The other half, which I am a part of, um, is raising money to donate to these organizations at the end of the semester. We have so far partnered with many Topeka restaurants for fundraising, and now our, my group is hoping to uh, go to local church congregations, including this one, to consider providing further funds. I am asking you, as we remember today's scripture, to give to Topeka's women and children in crisis through this project. There are a few ways you can donate. We have a webpage with United Way, and there are flyers that I will pass out after the service with more information about not only the class, but uh, it also has the web address. I am also happy to accept cash or checks on behalf of United Way. I will be staying after the service to answer any questions and to talk with anyone about this project. Seeing Jesus Christ as worthy of glory is what compels us to do what we do. Without that, we are no different. We are called to live sacrificially because he first sacrificed and tells us to follow his example. We give because he first gave to us. We love because he first loved us. The value of Jesus Christ in a believer is inseparable from the reason why a believer does good. In fact, I would say <clears throat> that's where our reason comes from, the reason being that Jesus Christ is worthy. As Christians, we are nearing the end of this Lenten season. Next week is Palm Sunday, so we can focus on giving honor to the Christ who has journeyed with us throughout this challenging season. Like Mary, we can pour out blessing, praise, and worship as we gather. No gift is wasteful when it, was, it is done with love, no matter how extravagant or how small. Will you pray with me? Loving God, you give and give and didn't think the life of your son was too high a price to pay for our salvation. Jesus' life was an example of sacrificial giving all the way to the cross. As we give this day, we want our gifts to impact the world, but even more, we want them to bring glory to Christ, who lived and died for all your children. Help us to not hold back anything. We pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, and Redeemer. Amen.